So, uh, Tom Reed here. Al, you know I uh, upload these to YouTube. Yes. You're cool with that. Mm -hmm. How you been? Good. Good. You, know, you got a lot of reaction to the uh, to the last video we did. I did. Yep. People uh, think you're a good person. They think that's great that you got that off your chest. And yeah, I really felt just guilty. I don't know. Yeah. Welcome to the rest of us. Right. Everybody's got stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So, what's new with you? Anything? Um, I'm just I'm working on um getting into rehab. <laughs> Where? Yeah, hopefully I go to Sacred Heart. Okay. Now, you're yeah. doing crack and coke and crack uh, heroin, heroin, right? Yep. And still about the same dollar amount? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. And you, you really think you want to try this rehab? I want to get that Vivitrol shot. You do? Yeah. What interests you about that? Um, because it's a lot like Suboxone, except Suboxone didn't work for me because it didn't help the cravings and the thoughts and the, you know, because those are just horrible. Those drive you nuts. And everybody I know that has been on the Vivitrol shot is said it's great. It kills your memory, your thoughts. You don't even think about heroin. It's like, it doesn't mean anything. Is that an option for rehab? The, if you have to be clean for 10 to 14 days, and then you get the shot. They send you to the doctor, and you get the shot. Gotcha. Yep. So... Say you go to rehab and you have a successful rehab and you get out. What are your plans after rehab? I'm going straight to Warsaw, Indiana, where my mother is. She just turned 80. She just beat breast cancer. And she's lonely. She needs me. She needs help. She does? Yeah. Okay. She can't even go to the grocery store. She has to order groceries through the, you know, internet. Okay. Have you had any other communication with any of your family members? Um, I don't talk to my children uh, my oldest son is stuck with my ex-husband right now since my father passed away even though he was legally given to in the will guardianship he's, he's mentally disabled he was given to my brother but my brother can't do it by himself but he wants Jordan to come there to Indiana so as soon as I get to Indiana Jordan can come to Indiana because we'll all be there Okay. And I have to get him home with us. He's been without me since my father passed away. And um, it's, it's, it's not right. My dad, I found out my dad's ashes are at my ex-husband's house. My father hated my ex-husband. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, great. You know, the executor of the estate was his ex-girlfriend. He was going to change that, but she has done nothing. There's been no memorial service. They've spent all his money in his bank account. There's nothing to give to my children. But they told my children that I took it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm homeless, living on the streets. Let's, let's move over here a little bit. Uh -huh. Homeless, so, living on the streets. So you are homeless? Yes. But, so you say living on the streets, so what's the average night and tail like? Uh, where, where, just where exactly do you sleep? Oh, God, you just try to stay awake all night long. Really? And make as much money as you can. Um, it's just... We sleep in, in um, dope houses. <laughs> gotcha. And yeah. it's not a safe place, you know? Are they, not a are, good place. are they heated? Um, they do provide heat, not all of them, but the, you know, the one that we go, we're at, he provides heat. Um, you know, we get blankets from the um, um, Covenant people. Um, and, you know, we use those to make beds on the floor and stuff. But it's just, I'm, I'm 48 years old. I'm tired. Yeah. yeah. When you're at a dope house, is there a charge for that to stay there? Some, some houses, if you're going to stay the night, they want 10 bucks. But not the one that we're at. Oh, no. cool. Yeah, no. So you get by. Yeah, you get by. Gotcha. But, you know, they get raided and you get handcuffed. And <laughs> Speaking of raided, uh, you know, Becky was locked up. Yep, yep. She got house arrest and a tether. Oh. And then she got caught taking the tether off. Oh, Becky. Yeah. So she's back in jail. Right. Oh my God. Yep. So who knows when she's getting out again? Well, I'm sorry to hear that because I miss her. I love her. I know. like Becky. Yeah. She's a good person deep down. You know, a lot of people think she's evil, but she's not. She's just protective of herself. Right. You know. Uh, you know they've been cracking down quite a bit here on Michigan Avenue. Yes. What, what's your take on that? Well, they're doing a lot of stings, a lot of, you know, they get you. 
you know, a car pulls over and you get in a, what they used to do is you'd get in a date's car and they'd tow the date's car and tell you to go. Now, what they're doing, they're using undercover officers and pull up, you think it's a date, you get in, they say, how, how much, you know, what can I get for 25? As soon as you say something sexual, they're like, okay, cool, yeah. And, uh, where do you want to park? Or maybe we should go to a room, and then the cops pull up behind us. Flip the lights, they get you out of the car, they put you in handcuffs, put you in the car, they tell the guy to go. Um, they try to tell you that he's a... Th the last time that happened to me, they told me, they said, you know, that guy F's chickens. You just got in a chicken effer's car. <laughs> I was like, your coworker does that? Because I know he's an officer. I'm not stupid. Right. How else did he hear what I said? Yeah. I mean, how did they hear what I said? So anyways, yeah. So um, they would take you down to the um, station, um, run your stuff, make sure you didn't have any felony warrants, and then write you a ticket and make you walk home from the station. Now, they're doing all the same stuff except... They put you in the car and they're taking you to the Beard. mound place. Oh, mound? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, they're putting you, they're locking you up. And if you don't do your bond at mound, then you go right to um, Wayne County. And they don't have enough room for, uh, for people with petty little dumb tickets. So they're generally kicking people out. That's what they did for me. They booted me out after 10 days, I think. Yeah, okay. Before I even went to court, so. You know, I noticed when I'm down here that the police patrol seems to be ramped up on the weekends more. Uh -huh. Is that just how it is? They, yeah, I just... Yeah, they just... Uh, like, the blue and white cars aren't the ones that we really worry about. It's the black cars, because there's a team that's set up to... handle us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And are they still sending the female decoy out here, here and there? I have not seen her. No. Nope. Okay. Oh, no, she is, but no, I have not seen her. Mm -mm. Okay. Your name's Phoenix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, that's about it, huh? Yeah, that's it. So when do you expect this rehab thing to go for you? Um, it is nobody's decision and nobody's job to make the phone call but mine. Okay. So all I have to do is pick up a phone and call the 1-800 number, and I, I can go. And it's just a lot of fear, getting, you know... Yeah. Ignoring the sickness in my stomach when I think about it, but you know, I know it's what I have to do and I know it's the right thing to do yeah. to get back to my son and sons. Yeah. Hopefully, okay. I have three, and um, you know, get to my mother, help her. She just turned 80. You know, my yeah. father died at 79. I don't want to lose my mother without being, I haven't seen her in six years. Right. You know, she needs me, she needs help. Okay, you got any questions for me? No. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right.